going to do some more problems related to permutations and combinations. First one we'll look at is how many different five cod poker hands are there? Okay, all you really have to do is know that there's five cards and that there's 52 cards in their entire deck in terms of just knowing about cards. All right, now the thing you need to realize that is that if you have the two of spades, the three of clubs, the two of diamonds, the queen of clubs, and the three of spades, those are five cards. This is the same as getting the three of clubs. I imagine you were dealt the cards. This was the first card, the two of spades, that is three of clubs, the second card, and so on. The last card is the three of spades. Oh, if you're dealt the three of clubs, and then the two of diamonds, and then the two of spades, and then, I'll do the three first, the three of spades, and then the queen of diamonds, unless I made a silly mistake. These are the same five cards. These hands are identical. So we don't want to count them twice. Here, the order doesn't matter. The order of your five cards does not matter. That's called combination. When the order matters, it's called a permutation. Remember, the permutations on the letters CAT. Well, we agreed that CAT and TAC are different. It's the permutation. The order matters. In, combina in combinations, the order does not matter. So these two five-card poker hands are the same. So we're going to use combination. There are 52 decks in the cards, in a deck of cards. There are 52 cards in a deck, and we want to choose five of them. And this is our answer. This is the number of five-card poker hands. You know, depending upon your calculator's ability, you know, some calculators you'll type in 52, and then you'll hit the NCR button, and then you'll type in five, and it gives you the answers. It gives you the answer. Okay, so it's the top number factorial on the top, the bottom number factorial in the bottom, and then the difference. 52 minus 5 is 47. So 5 factorial in the bottom times 47 factorial. There it is. You want to work it out, get an exact answer, great. Well, this is an exact answer, but to get an exact number, great. Now, suppose you have 20 people at a party, and each person is going to shake hands with everyone else. How many different handshakes will there be? 20 people, there's going to be 50, how many handshakes? Well, the first person, now we're going to assume that one does not shake hands with him or herself. Okay, one only shakes hands with other people. So the first, imagine we number the people 1 through 20. Well, the first person is going to shake hands with 19 people. Person 1 will shake hand with person 2, 1 with 3, 1 with 4, all the way down 1 through 20. That's 19. Now, you know, we want to know how many different handshakes. In other words, if you shake hands with me, and I obviously therefore shook hands with you, we're not going to count that as 
two different handshakes. I'm going to count it as one handshake. Okay, you shake hands with me. I shake hands with you. There was one handshake that just happened. So when it comes to person two, I'm not going to say again that person two shakes hands with person one. But person two shakes hands with person three and four. The people he or she have not shaken hands with. All the way up to person number 20. Well, if from 3 to 20 was 19, sorry, from 2 to 20 is 19, well then, 2 to 20 is 19. But there's really no 2. Person number 2 is, not, so there's another 18 handshakes. Person number 2 shakes hands with 18 people. Person number 3 will shake hands with number 1, but I already counted them. They will shake hands with person number 2. They will not shake hands with themselves, but they, they also will shake hands with person 4, which we haven't included yet, and shakes hands with person 5 all the way down to 20. This is 17. And so on. Person number 18 will shake hands with person 19, and 18 will shake hands with person 20. The 18 will shake hands with two people. And person number 19 will shake hands with one person. Which one person? Person 20. 19 will shake hands with 20, and person 20 will have shook hands with everyone. So basically, you want to add up these numbers. You want to add up 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way up to 20, excuse me, all the way up to 19, and Gauss gave us a nice way of adding up the first 19 numbers, we are starting with 1. So you take the last number, you multiply it by one more, and then you divide by 2. One of those numbers will be even, because if the first number is odd, well then when you add 1, it'll be even. If, in fact, the first number were even, then when you add 1, the second number will be odd. Exactly one of the two numbers will be even. And 2 goes into 20 10 times. So you're left with 19 times 10, which is 190. There will be 190 handshakes going on. Nobody shakes hands with themselves, and nobody shakes hands with anyone else more than one time. Everyone shakes hands with everyone else exactly one time. Now, suppose there are 30 students in a class, and there will be five awards, five awards. And the question is, in how many different ways can you give out these awards? How many ways can you give out the five? Five awards. Okay. Now, case A is a student can receive any number of Awards. And just to have it in front of us, in front of us, the second part, a student can receive a, no more than one. No more than one award. Okay. So now you have 30 students and there are five different awards. 
five different awards. You have award number one, you have award number two, award number three, award number four, and award number five. They are all different. Now, does the order matter? In other words, if student seven wins award one, student three award two, four, eight, and 28, is this different than this in this way? Answer is yes. The same five people won awards. But award number one, they're not the same people. Award number two, yes, they are the same. Even three are the same. But award number four, they had different people. And award number five had different people. In other words, these this list of five and this list of five, they're different. They're different. The order matted. The order matted. Okay. Now, suppose you can't win more than one award. So basically for B, all we're doing is from the 30 we're choosing five. From the 30, we're choosing five people. You, 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 and you. Come up, get your awards. Okay, here the order matted. You want to choose five. Well, we, we need to think about that. Need to think about that. Okay. Yeah, I, I take that back. In permutations, the order matters. Okay, in permutations, the order will matter. So, Basically, these are all permutation problems because the order matters. The order will matter. So for B, for part B, since it's permutations, I like to do this. You can't win more than one. So the first, for prize number one, they get to pick any one of 30 students. They get to pick from 30 students for prize number one. For number two, they get to pick from the remaining 29. And then 28, and 27, and 26. For the record, this is 30 factorial. Could you say, wait a minute, but 30 factorial should go down to one. I don't have 25, 24, 23, 22. But 30 factorial does. So you know what? I'm going to divide by 25 down. Just for the record, 30 factorial is 30 times 29 times 28 times 27 times 26 times 25, 24, 23, and so on. So that's 25 factorial. And when I divide it by the 20 factorial in the bottom. This cancels out, and I get just what I said the answer should be. So in terms of calculating it, say, using a calculator, there is a nice way of doing it. It's 30 factorial divided by 25 factorial. Okay. Now, let us consider part A. Part A says... You can win multiple awards. 
Okay, you can win an award and then win another award and win another award. You can win more than one award. Okay, but it's a permutation. So I put my dashes. How many people can win the first award? Any one of the 30. How many people can win the second award? 30. You can keep winning. Once you win, you can win again. It's 30 to the fifth. I guess I know that number is 243 with five zeros. 24,300,000. There's a lot of different ways of having win it if you can win again and again. All right. Suppose you have a bookshelf and you want to put in the bookshelf, three novels, two math books, and say one chemistry book. You want to know how many different ways you could arrange them. Well, if there's no restrictions at all, which is part A, no restrictions, how many different ways can you arrange those six books? The answer is 6 factorial. How many different ways can you arrange 6 objects? 6 factorial. Why? Because you have 6 places in your bookcase. You can put any of the first 6 any of the 6 books there in the first slot. And now there's 5 left. And then there's four left, and now there's three books to choose from. Now you get to choose one book from two, and then the last one is one. There are six factorial ways if there are no restrictions. For part B, is going to have restrictions. The math and novels are together. Now, whenever you do these problems, you have to understand what the person means. Okay? Now, there, I guess, are two different ways of doing this. What does it mean the math and novels are together? Does it mean the math books are together? That is, you're going to have math books and then novels? Or just the math books and the novels are mixed together and the other books are not in between? Well, I'll assume the math books are together. And the novels are together. So basically, you're going to have the three math books, the three math books, and the two novels get together. Now, where can you put the chemistry book? And the answer is one, two, three. If you have the math books to the left of the novels, you can now put their chemistry book in one of three places. Now, you could rearrange the three math books. 
three factorial. How many different ways can you arrange m different objects? By the way, I'm going to assume that the novels and the, are different from one another, and the math books are different from one another. There are six different books. Okay, they're not duplications of the same novel, for example. Oh, excuse me. There are three novels and two math books. What a surprise. I thought there'd be more math books than novels. Okay, so you can put the two math books first. And to the right of that, there's three novels. Now, how many different ways can you arrange the two math books? Two factorial. How many different ways can you arrange the three novels? Three factorial. There are two factorial times three factorial. If I'm not mistaken, that's 12 ways of arranging the two math books and the three novels, if the math books come first. But you know what? You can permute those. You can put, you can rearrange these two blocks of books, there are two blocks of books, in two different ways. You can have the three novels, and then you can have the two math books. Okay. But no matter how many there are, there are, what I say, 12 times 2, there are 24 different ways of arranging those five books. For each one of them, do you have Math 1, Math 2, Novel 1, Novel 2, Novel 3? I can get three of them out of here. I claim that I can get three orderings, different orderings, out of these. I claim that I can get three orderings out of this. Math books go together. Novels go together. I can put the chem book in front. Or I can put the chem book in the middle. Or I can put the chem book in the end. Any one of these different orderings, I can multiply by three. I can multiply by three. And there's your answer. Probably a cleaner way of doing this problem. It's not much different from what I said. But probably a cleaner way of doing this problem would have been the following method. We have three different groups of books. We have one chemistry, we have two math, and we have three novels. In terms of the chemistry books, I can arrange them one way. One factorial is one way. The two math books, two factorial. The three novels, three factorial. But then these three groups, these three, this group of three, I could have rearranged them three factorial ways. And that's a nice way of writing the answer. Three factorial times one factorial times two factorial, times three factorial. That's the same answer that I got over here, because three times, two times one, that's three factorial, times this. Two factorial times three factorial. The only, visually speaking, the only difference between these two is this one is multiplying by one factorial, which is one. Multiplying by one doesn't do anything. So you get the bundles together and do it. Let's do another one since 
I felt I could have done this one better. Suppose you have four different bucks. Suppose you have four different types of bucks. You have two biology books. This time you have three chemistry books. You have five English books. And you have two math books. How many different ways can you arrange these five, twelve books if you're going to keep the bio books together, the chem books together, the English books together, and the math books together? Well, two biology books, you can arrange them in two different ways. Call the books bio one and bio two. You could put them on the bookcase that way, or you could have put book two, and then book one. I'll put it that way. There are three factorial different ways of rearranging the chem books. Three factorial six. Chem one, chem two, book chem three. Chem one, chem three, chem two. Chem two, and then chem one and chem three and chem 2, chem 3, and chem 1, or chem 3, chem 1, chem 2, chemistry 3, chemistry 2, chemistry 1. Now, I hope I'm motivated why these numbers are correct. Why am I multiplying them? The reason is, for each one of these six over here, you can have these in front, well, that's still 6, but here's where you get multiplied by 2. 2 factorial is 2. You can also have those 6. For example, this last ordering says you have bio book 2, bio book 1, and then chem book 3, chem book 2, chem book number 1. Okay, that's where we're multiplying. And we multiply by 5 factorial for the 5 English books. And finally, 2 factorial for the 2 math books. But here's where you have to really catch on. You don't have to have the bio books first and the chem books second and the English third and the math fourth. Keeping the same audits. A 2 factorial times 3 factorial times 5 factorial times 2 factorial is a million. Keeping those same order of the bio books and the chem books and the English books, we can move those around. There are four blocks now. You have the block of bio books, the block of chem books, the block of English books, and the block of math books. You can jiggle them around. So the final answer is 4 factorial times 2 factorial times 3 factorial times 5 factorial times 2 factorial. Don't forget to permute the bundles. You certainly don't have to put the bio books first and the chemistry second, etc. Well, let's do one more. Suppose back to the old problem. You have the three novels. You have the two math. And you have the one chemistry book. Okay, you have six books. Six books. You want to arrange them in your bookcase. And here's the deal. Only... The novels have to be together. So, how I see it is you have three novels and three other books. Three other books. Which are the three other books? Two math and one chemistry. So, these have to go together. 
those have to go together. So, you know, basically, you have other one, other two, other three, and then the novels. Novel one, novel two, novel three. These go together. I'm, so, right now, I'm looking at this as four different objects. One, two, three, and four. There are four factorial different ways of arranging these groups. First group, second group, third group, fourth group. Now, wherever these three end up, in other words, if you have other two, and then you have other one, and then you have the novels, and then you have the other number three. Okay, this is one of these four factorial ways of arranging it. Notice that I do have the novels together, but they don't have to be together as N1, N2, N3. I can have N1, N3, N2. I can have N2, N1, N3. How many different ways can I arrange those three books? Three factorial. So. There would be your final answer. 3 factorial times 4 factorial. And if you look in the back of a book, it should be written that way. Because if you write down a number, is it 24 times 6, 144, I think, it, it's not going to be very clear why it's 3 factorial times 4 factorial. For example, if they just wrote you know, 144, you'll look at it like, I only got 24. But if you had, in the back of the book it was like that, and you came up with only 4 factorial, you say, all right, I, got, I have the 4 factorial. Why am I multiplying by 3 factorial? Oh, yeah, wherever I put the box of novels, the box of three novels, I can permute those novels. But still, they're separate from the other books. They're separate from, they're together. The three novels are together. So that's a great problem. Now, you want to form this committee. You have eight women, and you have six men. And you want to make a committee that has the committee. The committee will have three women and uh, three men. How many ways can you do this? No restrictions. Well, from the eight, you want to choose three. Now, the question is, does the order matter? Okay, if you want to be on the basketball team, it doesn't matter to you, well, it shouldn't matter to you whether you're the first one picked or the last one picked. You're on the team. Okay, it, it doesn't matter. And here's a great example. If six people are going to win your state lottery, which is $199 billion this week, I don't think you're going to care if you I, I, imagine they pick six different six winning numbers. Okay, and the first six numbers, I think the six numbers, the first six numbers they call out, you didn't win. 
The second six numbers, they call out, you didn't win. The third set of six numbers, they called out, you won. The fourth set, you didn't win. The fifth set of numbers, they call out, you didn't win. But the, and the last set of six-digit numbers, you didn't win. It, you, I don't think you're going to care. Like, oh my, and I wish I, would, I won with the first set of numbers. No, it, it doesn't matter. When it doesn't matter, you use combinations. How many different ways can you choose three men from six? The answer is six choose three. And you multiply these. That's the number of ways of picking three women from eight and three men from six. And, and three men from six. Okay, now, going to get interesting for plot B. Suppose two men are fighting. They, that they refuse to be on the same committee. They refuse to be on the same committee. So, let us call a man M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, and M6. And suppose those are the two that are feuding. They will not be on the same committee. Okay. So, you still from the eight women, you have to choose three times. Now we have to do the men. You have to do it in cases. When you do pick M1, but of course not M2, plus, or you do pick M2, but not M1, or neither M1 nor M2. So you are, in the first case, you are going to pick M1. The M1 is known to be a committee member. So you really, so now you only have to choose two. But you're really choosing these two from five. Okay, because M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6. You, you know you're choosing M1. Okay, so from the remaining, oops, oops, from the remaining four, because you can't choose N2, from the remaining four, you're going to choose two. Now, the game is just reversed now. You are going to choose M2. M2 is going to be chosen. So that means you can't choose M1 as well. So from the four remaining, you have to pick two more. Because M2 and two other men, that's three men. Now, you're not going to choose M1 or M2. That is, from these four, hmm, they're all the same. From, the, oh, from these four, you want to choose three. And that would be the answer. It's eight factorial times that sum. Either you do pick M1, so M1, but not M2, M2, but not M1, or neither of them. You have to be able to partition, in this case, into three different categories. M1, but not M2, M2, but not M1, or neither M1 nor M2. Now, let's do this same problem, but this time, a man and a woman, they refuse to be on the same committee. They refuse to be on the same committee. Again, you have eight women, and six men, 
and one man will not be on the same committee as one of the women. So the women are W1, W2, W3, W4, W5, W6, woman number 7, woman number 8, man 1, 2, 3, man number 4, man number 5, man number 6. And for argument's sake, with loss, without loss of any generality, let's suppose it's woman 1, and man one, one, they don't want to be together. So again, I think there'll be three cases. Woman one will pick, but we certainly can't pick man one. Or we are pick man one, but not woman one. Or what are you talking about? They're feuding. They don't get to be on the committee at all. All right, so we are picking woman number one. And to remind ourselves, we want to pick three of each. We want to pick three women and three men. So if you are picking woman number one, then you only have to pick two more. And they are coming from the remaining seven. Now, you have to pick three men, but you're not going to pick man number one. So you're picking from five men. There were six men, but you're not picking man number one. Okay, next case. This case here. You are not picking woman number one. You still have to pick three. But from the eight women, we remove woman number one. So we're picking the three from seven women. The men, we did pick man number one, so we have to pick two more men, and we are picking them from a deleted set, from five. Now, you're not going to pick man one or woman one. So you still have to pick three women and three men. From the women, you know you're not picking one, woman number one, so you're picking from seven. And from the six men, you know you're not picking man number one, so you're picking from these five. And there's your answer. Do lots of these, you start catching on how to count. Watch the video a couple of dozen times. Okay, so you're going to walk to work and... You want to know how many different ways you can walk. You want to know how many different ways you can walk. These are corners. One, two, three, four. Another four. Another four. Two more sets of four. You're going to walk to work. You live at this point here, and you want to go to point B. And the agreement is you can only go to the right, and you can only go up. Of course, you could get to work theory by going this way and this way and that way and then up and back and down and across and up and back and then this way and then here and then here to here to here to there. But that's inefficient. You're going to walk efficiently. You can only go to the right and up. So the question is how many different ways can you get to work? Well, you have to think, what might a path be? What might one such path be? The answer is, let's write it down. You, you start at A. You can go to the right. 
and then you can go up, and then you can go to the right two, and then you go up. Well, you go up one, okay? I don't want you to think you have to go up two. And that brings you here. You go to the right one, and then you go up. That is a path to your job. You go to the right, then you go up one block. You go to the right for two blocks. You go up one block to the right again, and then up. You notice something, one, two, three, four rights, and one, two, three U's, or ups. No matter which way you go, that fact is going to be true. You're going to go four blocks to the right and three blocks up. You could have gone up three. One two, three, and then to the right. One block, two blocks, three blocks, four blocks. No matter how you go, it doesn't matter. You could have you could have went to the right two blocks and then up one block and then to the right two one, two, and then up two. Well, look at this. One, two, three, four rights. One, two, three left. So, there's four rights and three lefts. So, you want to write down seven letters. Four of them are going to be R's and Three of them are going to be less. Sorry. Four are going to be R's, and one is going, and three are going to be U's. Four R's and three U's. Well, that's seven letters. There's seven factorial ways of arranging seven letters. But some repeat. The four right repeats, four factorial, and this three U repeats. There is the answer. That's the number of different routes you can take to work. But let's, like always, let's change the problem a little bit. Suppose you have to pass by a particular corner. Again, only up and to the right, but you have to pass point C. Well, the question is, how do you go from A to C? Well, you have to go two blocks to the right and two blocks up. One, two to the right, two up. Two rights, two U's. This is from A to C. Now, what about from C to B? Well, you have to go up one and two to the right. Two to the right, one up. The order you do that in is up to you. To, get, to go from A to C, you just have to write down four letters, two R's, two U's. U, R, U, R. That will get me from A to C. 
first I go up one, then I go to the right, then it tells me to go up, and then it tells me to go to the right. Any four letters where you have two U's and two R's will be a path from A to C. So how many paths are there from A to C? Well, there's four letters or four blocks. Two are to the right and two are up. Now to go from C to B, there's three blocks, three factorial. Two are up, I'm sorry, two are right, one is up. You don't need to say that last one. So the answer, how many different ways to go from A to B? If you're going to stop at C, you're going to multiply the two answers. Number of ways of going from A to C, and then multiply that by the number of ways of going from C to B. This is 6 times 3, or 18. First bracket is 6, if I didn't make a mistake. Second bracket is 3. There are 18 different routes that you can take to work, whether you drive, walk, if you're going to, if you live at A and work at B and you have to pick up your co-worker at C. Suppose there are eight new school teachers, and you're going to place them in four schools. Okay? You have eight teachers. Teacher one, teacher two, teacher three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you have four schools, school one, school two, school three, school four. The question is, how many different ways can you place these school teachers? If you wanted, you can put teacher one in school one and teacher two in school one and teacher three in school one. You can put all of them in school one if you wanted to. Or you can put some in school three and school four. School two, they have enough teachers. So the question is, how can you do that? So basically, see if this is going to work. You have eight dashes, four, five, six. You have eight dashes. And above them, so you know, teacher one, teacher two, whatever I write above will be the location where teacher number two will go to. Here, the order matters. Teacher number one. Well, there are four schools. I can put teacher number one in any one of the four schools. Teacher number two. I can put her in any one of the four schools. Teacher number three. He goes to any one of the four. In fact, these school teachers, they can go to any one of the four schools. It's four to the eight. That's the number of ways of arranging or putting, placing these eight school teachers into four slots. Now, eight school teachers, four schools, 
It's reasonable that they each get two. How many ways can we do that? He teaches four skulls. Going to do it evenly. Two teaches per skull. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What might, and again, teacher one, teacher two. What can I put above these lines, above these dashes? The answer is two S1s, two S2s, two S3s. I can put S1, S1, I can put S2, S2, S3, S3, S4, S4. Now, what on earth does this mean? Oh, simple. Teacher 1 goes to school 1. Teacher 2 goes to school 1. Teacher number 3 goes to school 1. Teacher number 4 goes to school 1, etc. Teacher number 8 goes to school number 4. So basically, I'm writing down eight different letters. I'm writing down eight different letters, eight factorial. Oh, there's repetition. There's two S1s, there are two S2s, and two S3s, and two S4s. There they go. That's the number of ways of putting school t two school teachers into these four schools. Now, just for the record, our eight factorial is eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. The seven times six times five times four, etc., seven factorial. Two factorial, two times one is two. Two times one is two. Two times one is two. This bottom is just eight. Two times two is, oh no, that's not true. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two. I'm just going to leave it at eight times two. The eight factorial, the eights cancel, and you get seven factorial over two. Okay, whether you simplify it or not, that's up to you. So, one very valid answer is, is this here. That's one very valid answer. Okay. So these slashes, they make life, or these dashes, they make life easy. Suppose you have 12 people. You have 12 people. And you want to make three committees. One committee has size three, one committee has size four, one committee has size five. And you have 12 people. Person one, Alan, Betty, Claudia, Dora, Eric. George, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Henrietta, Indigo, Jose, Caller, Lewis. 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay. And we'll call the committees. Committee 1, Committee 2, Committee 3. It is supposed to be three people on committee one and four people on committee two. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, five people on committee number three. 
Well, this is one ordering. Person A is on committee. Alan's on committee one. Betty's on committee two. C's on committee, sorry. Betty's on committee one. Claudia is on committee one. Dora is on committee two. Eric is on committee two. Felipe is on committee two. George on committee three. Henrietta on committee three, etc. But it doesn't have to be that way. I can have C1 and C2 and C1 and C3 and C1 and C2 again and C2 again and C2 again and the rest C3. This is a different ordering. Now, Alan, well, Alan is still on committee one. But look at this. Betty's now on committee two. It's a different ordering. How many different ways can I write down 12 letters where three of them are C1 and four of them are C2 and five are C3? Piece of cake. 12 letters, 12 factorial. Three of them repeat, four of them repeat. Wow, look at that. Five of them repeat. That's the number of ways of writing. There's a number of ways of picking three committees from 12 people where three, one committee has three members, another has four members, another has five members. And I did leave out something very, very important. It can't be on the same committee. You can't be on more than one committee. You cannot be on more than one committee. That, that changes things a lot. You cannot be on the same committee. And that finishes the problems using combination, permutations, and basic counting principles. You must learn how to count. You have a very, very hard time studying probability if you don't know how to count. 